It's Friday evening. I'm Devi and thanks for choosing to join us for the next 30 minutes. If you missed our launch episode last week, a quick sum up of what this show is all about. No depressing news. Here, all we do is go after people trying to rip you off and have a few laughs with off-the-wall South Africans living their unique best lives. The time here goes very quickly, so here's the lineup. A chronic investment peddler gets some special attention from the Devi team. Did you tell them that you actually on bail right now? No, I didn't. Why didn't you tell them that? I will confirm with you everything for my There's day. nothing to confirm. Then, pink is also my favorite color, but you have never met anybody this crazy about pink. I know you've got a pink house. People said you had a pink house. It's only when you get inside the house you realize it's very pink. Yes, and I'm not done yet. <laughs> First up, with money too tight to mention, an investment promising incredible returns can be so tempting right now. We go after Johan van Eerden, whose trail of debt and disappointment goes back years. This is Johannes van Eerden, also known as Johnny. He claims to be a successful businessman who will help you invest your money for high returns. But his investors allege it's all one giant con. He was living the high life. He was telling me, no, his children are in private schools. He's so fluent that I tell you, he will sell you sand on the beach. I believed him because he was a pastor. I don't trust this business at all. It's not legitimate. So here's some of the contracts that I signed. Helman Jacobs invested 600,000 rands with Johnny van Eerden in his GP Connect medical practice business in September 2017. You would initially invest money and they would open a medical practice under your name, basically. And you'd be part owner or co-owner of the practice. The investment was quite lucrative. I think it was at that stage 8% uh, a month. A month? Yeah, a month. It looked all above board. There was company registration. They had offices in Brooklyn at that, that stage. And that's quite a black, like, almost fancy address. Yes. So but Legit. <laughs> yes. How did Johan come across in that meeting? Very positive and he was telling me that I think at that stage they had 17 branches open countrywide already. I didn't think anything funny about it and I actually asked him, you know, how are they that they're doing so far? And he said, no, oh, they're doing great. They're making lots of money, etc. So how much did you put in? I put in 600,000 in September and another 200,000 in end of October. What made you put in the extra 200,000 at the end of October? Well, that first payment, 48,000 if I remember correctly, it was pro rata. I mean, if, if you put in 600,000 and by the end of the next month, you're getting 48,000 in your bank account, yeah. you're thinking, yeah, this, this hell, is... did I catch a good investment, right? Correct. Then at that stage, Johanna told me, each 100,000 buys a practice. Invest in the end of October and then nothing after that. This wasn't Van Eerden's first rodeo, says Pretoria pensioner Babe Vessels, who was scammed in 2007 when he invested hundreds of thousands in an alleged loan shark business run by Van Eerden. The business name was Future Care and it was a business that uh, uh, this loan sharks and the interest that he got on that would be 30% of which he said to me that I will get 18%. So yes, see, I thought, yo, the things are safe, right? The MO was the same. As with Hellman, a first payment was made. I did get some money, but yes, see, it's so little that you can't even speak about it. So in the first month, how much did he give you? In the first month when he was supposed to give me 18,000, he gave me, if I remember correctly, about 12, and he said the others will come, and that was a lot. And then, not again after that. And he kept on like that. For Nobody. years? Yes. I asked him, you know, what, what's going on, etc. And they said, no, they're booming offices, they have cash flow problems. And then this excuse started. So at that stage, I told him, look, can I come and work for him to actually help, or obviously protect my investment? We managed to open one practice. Like not, a real one? 
like a real practice. Like one that you saw with your own two eyes? Well, I was running it. So I had a doctor in there and a receptionist. I'd, I myself was trying to set all this up. I did the, the running around to BHF to get it regist registered. And this, this is what came as quite a shock to him, it seems. Legally, you're not, you cannot, as a private company or person, open a medical practice. You need a doctor. Santon-based attorney Reggie Chabalala says Van Eden was flouting several laws with his medical practice scheme and that the business model simply didn't make sense. One of the things that stands out for me is he's promising fixed returns from profits made by medical practitioners. And the other thing is that he's talking about medical practices that are being sold by practitioners that are making profits. Uh, that doesn't make sense. I don't think there's any medical doctor who would sell their practice when it's making profit. So somebody from the outside can't come in and say, oh, I have an interest in investing in this business, and then start digging around, because in this case, you're talking about patients' personal information. Exactly. So it's not possible? It's not possible. Not even, a, not even a doctor can give you permission to do that. One Pretoria businessman who did manage to get his money back is Tapedi Ntswane, who invested 70,000 rands in November last year, hoping for a passive income. And then they said to me that I will get, start to get my first dividend on the 15th of December, of which it, the, it, I didn't get anything. It never happened. I end up opening a case at SAPS police station. After that, they never came back up until the police arrested uh, Johan van Eden. Just before lockdown, Johan appeared in court in March and brokered a deal with Tapedi. We all went to court and then lately my lawyer and their lawyer agreed that then they will have to pay back the money of which they paid me my 70,000 rand back. Despite being bust, Johan kept spamming Tapedi with his latest offers. Johan is keep on sending my email to me with the investment opportunity, but with a different logo to my GP, but the same contact with my GP. When we return, we set up a sting and confront alleged serial scamster, Johan van Eerden. You're currently on bail for doing exactly the same thing, and now you're selling them a mine. Back to our friend Johan van Eerden. Quick reminder, according to investigations, Johan's been linked to a number of investment schemes over the years. But best you see for yourself how Johan tried to reel us in. Johan van Eerden is no Johnny come lately, and it appears he's been fleecing the unsuspecting public for a long time with a variety of different scams. He was telling me now he's got Bitcoin, he told me he's got people. Um, making up these dating sites for him, which is a lucrative venture. He had the micro lending scheme, which is probably one of his oldest ones, Extra Commercy. That I picked up, I think, 2002. He, he ran into problems there, and that cost I don't know how many millions. Private investigator Angelique De Silva says Van Eerden has a rap sheet as long as her arm. A lot of them came in as solo cases, and then we started to pick up a trend that there was one gentleman in particular who was involved in all of them. These complaints all form part of a consolidated case currently with the National Prosecuting Authority. He has multiple cases pending against him. He's currently out on bail. And so he is panicking and he wants to pay off as many people as possible so that he can continue and stay out of jail. So if we had to try and quantify, how much of money do you think he's swindled people out of? Easily over 20 million. How far back has he been doing this for? It spans over two decades. 20 years? That's correct. And, and it's been, he just adapts. The stakes are high for Van Eden, but despite the pending case, he took the bait when we set up a sting with two undercover operatives posing as potential investors. He met them in a boardroom in Mokhale City and spun his story. We buy practices. Now, when we buy a practice, we normally pay for it between 300 and 500 shows. That practice will then give us 100 shows plus a month. Okay. Okay, that's our net profit on the practice. Okay. That's about 100. Like to the doctor stay. So we 
do not want the doctor to stay. He's selling the practice for a reason. Okay. So either he's retiring, mm -hmm. he's ill, or he's immigrant. We put the same color doctor and the same gender that's been there, that's been successful. Yeah. If we were opening a practice, the concern would have been A, um, is it the right spot? Mm. Um, is it the right doctor for the area? Because certain areas are for a black doctor, certain areas for Indians, certain areas for women, certain areas for white. Yeah. So in this practice we are opening one day, what kind of doctor do we see? Mm. I don't know. But the moment Let's I look know, at the community. The down the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you haven't had any people come back and say, yo, no, 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 no. This you buy a practice, okay? You buy a practice. That's where you've got the history of profit. Let's say there's a practice, we buy for 300. I will then give you 50% of profits. We shared the undercover footage with attorney Reggie Chabalala. And the rate of returns that he's offering, ridiculous. How is that possible? Exactly, but that's also unlawful. Yeah. So if a practice requires 2 million and you pay in 2 million, then you're going to get 50% of the profits. That's what he said. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I've got the Chrome mine in the northwest. We've got the Chrome mine between Northern and Double Zambi. Mm. There's a Chrome mine that's mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually bought it as recent as yesterday. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Um, if I were you, if I was sitting where you are sitting, yeah. I would put half my money in the practice and half my money in the Chrome mine. Okay. That's what I would have done. Solomon in the Bible says in Proverbs, you must plant different kinds of seed mm -hmm. because you don't know which kind will grow. Mm -hmm. Did he quote the Bible at all? He's quoted the Bible many times. I've seen and also gotten from him messages about how pure his, his soul is okay. He's not going to hell. He's, he himself believes that he is not doing evil. He's not doing bad. <laughs> what do the laws say about somebody like this dishing out advice, talking about hundreds of thousands of rands? The matter is reportable because you're receiving money under false pretenses. Yeah, I can show you pictures of our mine now. That's amazing. I've got pictures here somewhere. Just... But Van Yeden kept pushing. Once again, I need to know how much money so I can calculate what I'll give you. When someone promises you a quick return, and whilst on the other hand say that they don't need money or your money, but on the other hand they put you under pressure to say how much money are you going to invest, when are you going to invest, that is a big sign to say that something is not right. And when you pin them down on one topic of medical practices and they start moving to the minds, that's also another sign to say, how, is this person an expert in medical practice acquisitions or is this person an expert in minds? That was enough for us, and we walked into the boardroom to confront him on the slew of allegations. Hi, Johan. Debbie, how are you? How are you? Uh, a lot of allegations about you taking people's money. Can I put them to you? So you get a right to a reply. If you put it to me, I will then reply. Great. So I've been listening to the conversation that you've been having with these gentlemen. Did you tell them that you actually on bail right now? No, I didn't. Why didn't you tell them that? I will confirm with you everything for my opinion. There's nothing to confirm. The fact is you're taking money from people. You're more than willing to go. I'm fine for you to go. Thank you. But you're taking money from people and you and you, you're basically running so many different scams. You're currently on bail for doing exactly the same thing. And now you're selling them a mine. I mean, where is your mine to start off with? And you're not even a registered service provider. The reality is that you're good at taking people's money. And now you're just running away. Send me your questions, I will answer. Come on, Johan. Van Yeden never responded to our extensive list of questions. I'd like to warn people, 
just to be careful and do your research. When you meet someone and they tell you a story which sounds too good to be true, just take two minutes and Google. He's mentioned on Hello Peter, he's on Facebook, he's on IRS's website. So the information is out there. Just do your research. Hellman and many of his other victims have given up on ever seeing their money again. But Reggie says all is not lost. My advice would be you need to act quickly, report it to the authorities, and if you're able to consult a lawyer, consult a lawyer who, is, who may be able to recover the money for you. But you have to act quickly. Act quickly and at the very least, Google a name before pouring in your savings. It sounds simple, but before you dream about those unrealistic returns, just do the homework. After the break, you'd better like pink because you're going to see more than just this. Barbie Brazil is not your ordinary four-way celebrity. Let's just say she's a standout kind of gal. We made a promise that on a Friday night, we would also give you a sneak peek into the lives of South Africans who are, let's just say, choosing to live life differently. Just before lockdown, we met Barbie Brazil in a world free from masks, social distancing and sanitizer. Perfected by plastic surgery and swimming in all things pink, meet the former stripper turned socialite, but keep your eyes wide open. This story goes in a flash. Heavy flashes of pink. So I've been in many situations. This is my absolute first. I'm going to mic you up. Oh, OK. You feel quite um, heavy. Don't worry, I've got this. <laughs> Those pretty little hands, I trust them. They can't be dangerous, can they? There we go. Thank they, you. I think they're good. That felt nice though. What Why did nice? you stop? Mm -mm. The touchy touchy. What? No man, stop that now. <laughs> it was just rather me than one of these two. I don't mind them too, you know, it's just a touch. I was born Annie Tembi Shabalala, and now I'm Annie Tembi Clary because I married Mr. Clary. Okay, so do we know what this is now? Um, it's, it's right here in your lounge. <laughs> yes. Do you, do you like practice on it? I don't need to practice. I'm a former stripper. I just, you know, roll around for my husband only. I'm a retired stripper, so. I mean, I'm 35. I can't be, you know, walking the pole in the strip club with the little girls who are 18 years old. That will walk on my nerves. Can you so, like, do a well? Oh, hell no. This dress will rip. <laughs> I'm already bursting out of it. Oh, so this is like a for a private moment thing with your yes. husband? Yes, and my friends, obviously. And, you know, when I'm hosting people around, <laughs> they get drunk, <laughs> they spin around, they fall. <laughs> I went to a Catholic school. Yeah, yeah, mm, me, Catholic school. From afar, I thought this was some kind of ornament, like a paperweight or something, but what is that? These are my first uh, boobies. I was 19 when I had the first boob job. These were the ones. This is our 800 cc's. These were 450, 450 cc's. Mm -hmm. These are 800. The appliances are pink. You've got a pink hubbly. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a smoker though, but I, I try different pink things. Pink fridge, pink drinks. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pink here. Yeah. They do work, okay? They, they're not some Barbie stuff. The way you're looking at them is like, oh my God. <laughs> she's just she's, she's mental. You know what? <laughs> she's a cartoon character. <laughs> they all do work. When people visit you for the first time, do, is, it, it, do they get a bit of a shock? I don't have a lot of people visiting me because I don't like people in my space. Well, thanks for letting us in. You're welcome, and thank you for coming. So is the whole house pink? The whole house. My office down here, the guest, uh, Lou here, my storage room that side, and my son's uh, bedroom and bathroom, my bathroom and my bedroom, and everything is pink. You gotta feel like you're on holiday when you wake up in the morning, like, oh, pink everything, pink food, pink dogs. How do you get the no. dogs pink? It's the natural dog fur coloring. It's also mixed with beetroot, but beetroot doesn't work that much. Don't let people lie to you. Okay. I tried it, the beetroot juice, it just kind of smells kind of funky. The other comes with vinegar in it. 
Most people say this is where the magic happens, but really. <laughs> what are your neighbors like? I don't know them, but most what I know, most of them complain about me. I had to change the whole balconies, this balcony, this side, and that side. Why? Because a lot of things were pink. I had to just make them white because apparently it was too pink and not the natural colors. I, I, what's a natural color? Isn't pink a natural color? But you still have pink pots outside? Yeah, well, I'm stubborn. So how pink was it outside? Extremely pink, as pink as these rugs. Those are the, that's the mild pink, almost close to the color of my car. But I had to just put it there because I decided not to cut the trees. So the neighbors would leave me alone, they wouldn't see the shenanigans that I'm doing on the balcony. <laughs> so what do you I do complain. on the balcony? Okay, maybe, maybe not. Well, maybe we, yeah. if you, even if you stay, if you won't. No, don't trees. worry, it's not sex. It's just walking around topless, you know, and stuff. You walk around topless? Yeah, well, my husband swims naked, so. <laughs> and you walk around topless? Why not? And they were complaining. Wouldn't you? No, they didn't see that. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I wind them up the wrong way. Maybe it's the or the I don't know. There could could be a lot of things. A lot of lot fake of stuff. So, <laughs> so how do you react when people say that you're crazy? You're crazy about pink. You're crazy. I laugh. I'm told I'm crazy almost every day. And I think sometimes I'm crazy. Fabulously crazy. They just have to keep up or ship out. I'm not here for them. I was not born for them. So you don't just order a car like this in this color. This is custom made. Of course it is. The rims and the tires and everything else, the interior, the leather, the hashtag BB on the leather also. <laughs> this is, I didn't think it further though. I didn't think about it. You like it? I love pink. You like it? You can do it, why not? Yeah, but you can't do it as, as much as I do it. <laughs> who does it like me in Africa? Who, who does it? Who does it? Who does it? Who does it? <laughs> From dicey investments to passionate pinks, we'll try to keep the range broad and entertaining every Friday night. See you next week, same spot. Until then, Chin up, South Africa. Keep our eyes on the horizon. We've got this.